Not too long ago, Zumbinis enjoyed the good life. Though they all looked slightly different, different eyes, noses, hair, feet, such differences meant nothing to the Zumbinis. And so they lived happily on Zumbini Isle, making small, useful products which were prized the world over. The Zumbinis had a sense of fulfillment and inner peace, not to mention healthy bank accounts. Then one day, who should show up but the bloats. The bloats offered to help the Zumbinis grow their businesses, expand their trade routes, and improve their quality of life. Being trusting sorts, the Zumbinis agree. But before long, the bloats had taken over everything. Stealing profits, canceling holidays, piling on work. The Zumbinis were getting pretty stressed out. Well, you can push them only so far before they take matters into their own hands, uh, so to speak. So they decided to escape and build a new home in a distant land. Now perhaps you're wondering what all this has to do with you. <laughs> Don't you see? You are the only one who can help them escape. Quickly, help them begin their journey. Only 16 at a time will fit in the boat. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to a new Let's Play. It has been quite a while. Uh, it's been a while since my last Minecraft Let's Play, and even longer since I did this series, the Games from My Childhood series. Uh, in fact, it's been about two years since I released the videos about the Hoyle games. Uh, and I meant to uh, post much sooner than uh, before now, but obviously that didn't happen. Uh, but I am back, and I really felt like playing Zumbinis. I was just in the mood. Uh, I've been watching uh, other Let's Plays of Zumbinis, but you know, there's always room for one more since it's not uh, that popular of a game on, on YouTube, um, which is a shame. It deserves more videos, and hopefully I can provide some uh, new commentary uh, that's different from what else is out there, um, or if this is the first uh, video you've ever seen, or if you've never even heard of Zoopinis before, I hope that you uh, enjoy it and can get a good idea of what the game is like by watching this video. Uh, but okay, let's get started. So uh, before I get into the game itself, um, I realize that Zumbinis is not a super famous uh, game, at least not anymore. So uh, let me give you a little bit of detail about what it's about. So uh, the original Zumbinis game was released in 1996. So uh, I definitely grew up with it. Uh, it was remade back in 2015 with some new graphics. Uh, I haven't played that version as, from what I can tell, um, the puzzles are the same. It's just updated graphics. So that copy is available on Steam uh, and some other places. So if you really want to play Zumbinis, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, and the graphics look nice. They're just not what I remember. Uh, and maybe I'll check it out one day, but for now, I really wanted to play this version. Uh, the nostalgic 90s version with graphics from uh, those days. Uh, it was actually really hard to find this since I, I don't have the CD. Uh, it's probably at my mom's house somewhere. Uh, and trying to find the original version online is difficult. Uh, and from what I've heard, getting it to actually run on modern computers is difficult. So I did a bit of digging. 
Uh, unfortunately, I managed to find this copy on a website called oldgames.com. I'll include a link. Uh, and it is technically free, except if you want it to not take four hours to download, uh, it'll be about $8, which I was willing to pay because I really wanted to play this uh, today. So... Uh, so check it out, uh, oldgames.com. Uh, it's the only place i found so far where you can get a downloaded version of Zumbidis, not, not a web version, and have it be the original version. And it was really easy to run. Uh, I think actually the way it's running, from what I can tell, it's running in DOSBox, uh, which came with the game. Um, and then in DOSBox, it's emulating an older version of Windows, and that's what's running Zumbini. So the technical part of it is a little beyond me, but um, from what I can tell, that's what's going on here. But uh, it was pretty easy to run. Uh, you just have to find the uh, the correct file and, and double click, and there it goes. So, uh, okay. So uh, as far as this particular playthrough goes, um, again, this is a game I played a lot, a lot as a kid. Uh, so I just want to relive some of those memories, visit some of the, uh, the old places and the old characters. Uh, and for this playthrough, I'm hoping to actually try to sort of complete the game. Uh, because I don't remember ever doing that as a kid. And part of the reason is that it's a pretty long game, actually. Uh, and it gets very hard at the end, like way beyond what you would think of for a kid's uh, educational game. So my goal is to try and meet at least one of the completion criteria, which I will explain later. Um, and along the way, I'll be discussing, you know, just why I like this game, um, why I think it stands out. Um, and there hasn't really been a whole lot like it since. So uh, I hope you enjoy the journey. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So you saw the opening video. So the basic premise, again, is you've got this island, Zumini Isle, where these creatures called Zuminis lived. And they were happy until some guys came along and enslaved them, basically. And so now they're trying to escape. And your job is to sort of lead this exodus of the Zumbinis uh, to try and find a new home. Um, and we have a long journey to go through and we can't take all of them at once. So we'll be making the journey many, many times uh, through the different uh, obstacles and puzzles uh, with different batches of Zumbinis. So here on Zumbini Isle, um, you can see there's a few buttons that we can click on. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and go to the map button just because I want to show you uh, an overall view of the entire game. So again, this is the journey of the Zumbinis. So uh, this is sort of a puzzle game. Um, there's lots of puzzles and challenges and logical uh, brain teasers you have to solve along the way. Uh, but it's framed as a journey. So we have to get Zumbinis from Zumbini Isle across the ocean. And basically, uh, the end point is somewhere here in the upper right corner. We can't see any of the landmarks yet because we haven't actually discovered them yet on this playthrough. But as we journey, they'll start to fill in the map. Um, and so we have to get our Zumbinis uh, safely along the way. So uh, right here, you can see at Zumbini Isle, there is 625 Zumbinis waiting to be freed. Um, that's actually... Um, uh, a significant number. It's every possible Zumbini times two, uh, which I'll go over later. Uh, then there's uh, different uh, waypoints along the way, rest areas, and then Zumbiniville is the end goal. Um, of course, no one is actually at any of these places yet. Uh, and there's actually two different modes for this game. So uh, I could switch over to practice mode uh, where you can immediately see the map filled in with all the different locations. Uh, so you could play any of the puzzles you want uh, just by clicking one of these locations. You can also choose between the four different difficulty levels if you wanted to. Uh, so if you just want to play a certain puzzle or practice a certain puzzle, uh, then practice mode is the uh, method for you. But you can see in practice mode, we don't have a number of Zumbinis to free. It doesn't save our progress. Um, it's just there to practice. So in order to actually get the sense of the journey, uh, I'm definitely going to be doing uh, this mode. Uh, but that was a little sneak peek of the encounters along the way. Uh, and then just uh, over here in the upper right, we do have some options. So we can do new game, load, save, quit. And we can turn uh, dialogue and sound on and off, background music on and off. 
I'm not actually sure what Sticky Mouse is. Maybe that mattered more in the old days, uh, but I'm going to keep everything basically the same. Uh, it might be nice if there was a way to adjust like uh, voices and music separately, like turn the volume up or down for those, but that's not really a thing. But I will go ahead and save the game uh, just so our save file has a name. Uh, so I'm going to do games from my childhood uh, Zoom Beanies. That's how I will save that. Uh, and you can also view the credits if you want, which I don't think I've ever done before. Oh! That's cool. But I think that'll be something, uh, maybe we'll save it for the end if we do ever finish. Uh, okay, so we'll hit OK. Uh, and then, yes, so you did see each puzzle has four different difficulties. Uh, in journey mode, each puzzle will be automatically at the easiest difficulty when we first encounter it. But after we go through a certain route a few times, it'll advance to a harder difficulty. And then things can get very, very hard uh, by the end. Um, so let's go back to Zubini Isle. Okay. And then each location you go to in the game, um, not only can you access the map, but you can also access the question mark, which is sort of the info screen uh, for what that location is about. So let's check out what we can do here. Okay, Zumbini Isle. Zumbini Isle is a place where you recruit each band of escaping Zumbinis. A total of 16 Zumbinis are needed to start each trip. Only two Zumbinis with the same exact features can be recruited throughout an entire game. Uh, so same exact features, uh, that relates to the customization over here. Uh, and the entire game means the entire playthrough. So out of those 625 Zumbinis, uh, only... Let's see. Wait, 625 is not divisible by two. So maybe it's not possible to make every uh, possible Zumini combination times two. Hmm. So that'd be f oh well, doesn't matter. We can figure out the math later. Okay, select a Zumbini by clicking on the different features in the lower left box until it has the features you want. Uh, because Zumini's are its, apparently. Um, to choose a random recruit, click on the dice icon underneath the Zumini. To quickly and automatically recruit 16 Zumini's, hold down the shift key and click on the dice icon. A full band of Zumini's will automatically appear from the cave, ready for their first adventure. A Zumini can also be placed back in the cave if you decide to choose a Zumini with different features. To continue the game, click on the go arrow button in the bottom right of the screen. Okay. All right, so Zumbinis. So um, when we send out Zumbinis, we have to do 16 at a time. Uh, that'll be the number that we start with, um, which is obviously way less than the total number. Uh, so we'll have to do them um, in batches uh, as they escape. Uh, so over here, we can choose different attributes to customize the appearance of the Zumbini. Uh, I almost said Zumbinis. I knew that was going to happen at least once. Oh, um, so, okay. So zoom beanies, uh, right here, they start as just a round, uh, torso, I guess. Or is that their head? I'm not sure. They're not human. So, uh, and you can see the torso is making noises if I click on it. Even though it doesn't have a mouth. Actually, they never have mouths, even when they're fully assembled. So I don't know how it's making sounds. Uh, but the arrow button is grayed out. Uh, so we can't actually send a blank Zumini off on the journey. It needs to have all the features. So uh, the four features are the hairstyle, uh, the eyes, the nose, and the feet. Although some of these feet are just uh, not feet. They're... Uh, motion or propulsion uh so for hair we have shaggy hair uh ponytail hair uh this which is like a i think the game file calls it a flat top um but it's like a poof or something this which is just a few little strands of hair uh and then this which has a backwards facing green hat because this was the 90s and bangs uh so those are the hairs um 
and just hair is not enough. We need more features. So uh, we've got wide open eyes, um, which are brown, apparently. I guess all Zuminis have brown eyes. Then the Cyclops eye, which doesn't seem to have a color, or maybe it's black. Uh, the sleepy eyes, which are also black. Uh, uh, eye glasses. And then uh, sunglasses. And then you've got different noses, so green, yellow or orange, uh, red, purple, and blue. And then you've got feet, roller skates, spring. Uh, this thing, which is sort of like, I'm not sure if it's like bicycle wheels, like motorcycle wheels, or I, I used to call it the inline skate. Um, and then this, which is like a sort of propeller or helicopter thing. Uh, so you can see once we have all four different features assigned, uh, then the Zoomini is ready to go and then this green arrow fills in. So, um, and they automatically apply names, which don't mean anything in the game. Um, they're never said in the game, um, but they're there and they're just sort of random. So uh, if you click a different features, it'll keep the name, but you can click the name itself to change it and see if you can find one that you sort of like. Uh, you can't type a name yourself. You just have to pick them. And most of them are kind of weird and unpronounceable, so um, so I'm not sure if I'll even remember them. But uh, anyway, so if you want to, you can go ahead and click the arrow, and then that Zumini um, will come out of the cave and scurry over to the ship ready to leave. Uh, and you can keep doing that with more Zuminis. So if I wanted to, I can make an exact twin of this one. Uh, but you see now it's grayed out. Uh, so I can't make more than two that have the exact same features. Uh, and if I want to uh, get rid of one of these Zumbinis, I can click it and then put it back in the cave. You can see the cave sort of lights up. Um, okay, or you can hit random and then it'll randomly make up a Zumbini with a random name. Uh, it doesn't actually make it yet, so you have to confirm it with the arrow. So. Uh, Zumbini features actually are pretty important. I think um, at least 70% of the puzzles in the game are based on Zumbini features. Uh, this is the logical journey of the Zumbinis. So the puzzles are based around things like sorting, uh, finding patterns, grouping, filtering, um, finding things in common, etc. between different Zumbinis. Uh, so, depending on what features your Zumbinis have within a group, uh, it can actually make some puzzles either a lot easier or a lot harder. So, for example, if you make uh, a group of 16 that contains 8 pairs, where each pair is exactly the same, so 8 pairs of twins, uh, that'll make most puzzles in the game easier. Uh, because whatever you do with one twin, however you sort it or order it, you can do basically the same with the other twin. Um, also, uh, even if you're not doing twins, uh, having things like having all of your Zumbinis having at least one shared feature, like a group where all of them have spring feet, uh, can make some puzzles easier. Um, having a Zumbini that has nothing in common with any of the others can either, uh, if I remember, that can either help or hurt. Uh, depending on the puzzle, but uh, for this playthrough, um, I think I want to do it sort of a genuine playthrough uh, and make the puzzles, um, play, play through the puzzles as they were meant to be played. So uh, I'm actually going to randomize uh, each of my bands of Zumbinis uh, with the random button. Uh, the one exception will be my very first Zumbini I will make using my favorite features. Uh, so that's shaggy hair, glasses, green nose, and roller skates. So this is the Zumini uh, appearance that I just think is the coolest out of all of them. Uh, and let me find... Touche! Let me find a name. Eliafu? Figgy? I need to find something. Luo, Luosi? Loki? A name that hopefully I can pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told you these are weird. I don't know if they just like did a key smash on their keyboard or if they use like a fantasy name generator. 
uh, Aiko. That works. That sounds like it could be an actual name. So he's going to go out. And then I'm not doing a twin. Uh, I'm just going to hit shift and then press the randomize button. And then uh, you can see a bunch of Zumbinis are just starting to come out of the cave. So theoretically, this should be a fairly uh, diverse spread of different features. But of course, um, it's not going to be like completely um, randomized. Uh, you'll always have some features that will just happen to be more common than others. So looking at this band, uh, we can see that, uh, for example, spring feet turned out to be more common than these sort of inline skates. Uh, it looks like the wide eyes are fairly common. Glasses are fairly common. Uh, got a couple ponytails. Only two with the green hat, so, so, so some features ended up being more common than others, which is to be expected. Um, Alright, so I think our party is ready to go. Uh, so again, this is the first group of 16 Zumbinis. Uh, it is possible to lose Zumbinis along the way, uh, depending on how you do on the puzzles. Uh, you can lose Zumbinis as a result of uh, failing certain puzzles. Uh, but other than that, we are ready to go. They are escaping at night. Hopefully the bloats don't see their little boat escaping. Uh, but when we're ready, we'll just hit this green arrow and continue. So uh, you can also pick up Zumbinis uh, if you just want to see what their names are. Um, I think I thought you could reorder them. Maybe not on this screen. But the order of them, for the most part, the order that they are lined up in really doesn't matter. So I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, but other than that, we are ready to go. So we'll hit the go button and start our logical journey. After days tossed about by a stormy sea, the Zumbinis reach the shore of a peculiar land. I hope their boat will be okay. Okay. So our beanie, our beanies, our zoom beanies have made it to the shore of a new land. I would show you on the map, but uh, actually I can't go to the map uh, because if you try to go to it, um, in between checkpoints, uh, it'll basically cancel that leg of the journey and all the Zumbinis who were on the journey will go back to the previous checkpoint, which in this case is Zumbini Isle. So uh, I'll show you the map once we get to the next checkpoint. Uh, but anyway, so their boat reached the shore, they climbed up the steep cliffs and now they just need to get across to the other side. Uh, but it looks like there is some kind of uh, potential obstacle in the way. So let us click on the question mark and see what's going on here. Uh, allergic cliffs. The allergic cliffs play by certain rules. What one cliff accepts, the other is allergic to. Look for one feature, such as a red nose, that does not cause an allergic reaction. Uh, so you can see the cliff faces here are actual faces. They have... Uh, faces in them like a miniature Mount Rushmore uh, and there are two bridges one in front of each face and we have to choose which Zuminis to send down which bridges uh, but before we do that let's just look around this place a little bit so we've got a nice blue sky we've got a river valley down below so if our Zuminis fall uh, they're gonna hopefully land in the river and not die. The Zumbinis can never actually die, even though sometimes um, it seems like they should, uh, the things they go through, but uh, don't worry, this is a, a G-rated game. Uh, but there are some interesting little features, like this little rock with a face, this rock, this tree has a face, lots of things have faces. This tree, 
Uh, I think that's all the faces, but uh, along the way, I can promise there will be lots of uh, interesting background details and various colorful characters, uh, so be on the lookout for those. Uh, and here's our band of Zoominis who are just sitting here uh, waiting for us to tell them what to do uh, because uh, Zoominis apparently uh, don't quite have the spirit of leadership and need someone like the player to guide them across. Uh, so the allergic cliffs, um, let's go ahead and just send one Zoomini down one path and see what happens. A uh, Kaislu, I choose you. Okay, so that one made it across, and that one is now safe. Uh, uh, the allergic cliffs are one of the puzzles in this game that uh, every time you approach them, the situation will look the same, uh, and you have to test uh, the cliffs using different Zoominis, and as you perform your test, you'll learn more information about uh, which Zoominis are accepted by which cliffs um, and which ones are rejected. Uh, so having done what we just did, we found out that this Zumbini uh, can get safely across this bridge here. So theoretically, if we had a twin Zumbini, uh, they would also be able to go across safely. Um, we don't have a twin for this Zumbini, um, not even a randomly generated twin. Uh, so we could try sending a Zoomini with very similar features, because uh, these cliffs are allergic to Zoominis based on what features they have. I don't know how that works biologically, uh, but they're not biological, so who knows. Um, okay, let's try sending... Uh, do we have any more ponytail Zoominis? Maybe a ponytail with a blue nose? No? Actually, this one doesn't really resemble the others that much, which is what you get with a random party. So this one is a ponytail, a uh, kaku. So let's just send it across and see what happens. Oh. Okay, so that is what happens when one of the cliffs does not like something about a Zumbini. Uh, it sneezes the Zumbini back to the start, but you also saw one of these pegs in the ground came flying out. Uh, and the help message didn't really explain these, but basically um, every time a Zumbini is rejected, uh, so basically every wrong guess, uh, will cause one of these pegs to uh, come flying out. So we had one, uh, and then there's two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, so if this six peg uh, is removed, then this rope will have nothing to support it. Um, and even if you think these two pegs might be enough, they're not. Uh, and then the entire bridge will collapse. So uh, on this puzzle, uh, you have five uh, wrong guesses that you can do. Um, and then the six guess... Um, will uh, cause the bridges to collapse and any Zuminis left on the left side uh, will fail, basically. Uh, so uh, that is something that you might see on harder difficulties, but on the easier difficulties, uh, you're not going to see it too much, um, even without really knowing what you're doing. Um, like, you have to be really not paying attention to fail uh, on the easiest difficulty, at least on this puzzle. Uh, so that was this Zoomini here that failed. So if it fails one bridge, it can always go on the other. Uh, as far as I know, um, in all difficulties of this puzzle, each Zoomini can only possibly go on one of the two bridges. So we'll send it across that way. Okay, so uh, these two Zoominis both have hair in a ponytail. So having hair in a ponytail doesn't really affect which bridge they go on. Uh, so let's see what else could possibly be causing it. Uh, it could be uh, that this one has a blue nose and this one has a purple nose. Oh look, this one has a twin. Okay, let's send the twin across. Because we know that one is the same, so it'll be safe. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, we've got some more ponytails, but we've already determined that the ponytail aspect doesn't matter. Uh, let's see if we've got... Okay, 
So this guy here has a purple nose and wide eyes, um, which is the same as both of these two. So let's send him across. Oh! Okay, so first of all, let's put him on the bottom because he has to go here. So even though this one had the wide eyes and the purple nose like these, um, the top bridge uh, or the top cliff did not accept him. Uh, so uh, we can try a different feature uh, and see what that does. So maybe the top bridge doesn't like uh, this hairstyle. Let's try putting this hairstyle on the bottom. Oh. Okay. So let's put him on the top. So this is interesting. So the only thing that this guy has in common with the previous two is that he has roller skates like they do, but everything else is different. So uh, that seems to suggest that all roller skates should go on the top. So let's try this one. So again, he's different from the others, but he had roller skates, so he was accepted. Then we'll put this one through. Okay, cool. So you can see uh, the ones on the top all have roller skates, uh, but these two on the bottom actually don't have anything in common. So this is something I don't think I quite understood when I was a kid, but I was reading up on Zuminis uh, recently. And from what I understand, uh, the way the allergic cliffs work uh, is that one cliff uh, is allergic, which means that that one cliff will reject a certain feature. So this bottom cliff is allergic to roller skates, and therefore uh, no Zumbinis with roller skates with roller skates can go over the bottom bridge because uh, he's allergic to roller skates. Uh, so that's what I understand. And then um, what I read is that uh, if one of them is allergic to something, uh, then the other one um, basically can only accept that one thing. So this one is allergic to roller skates, and this one is allergic to uh, any Zumbini that does not have roller skates. So if you want to think of it like that. So uh, allergic to roller skates on the bottom, so anything that does not have roller skates can go through. Um, and then at the top, you can think of needs roller skates. Uh, so that means I don't think we have any roller skates left. So I think that means all of the rest of them should be able to go on the bottom bridge. Because uh, none of these have roller skates. So the bottom one should not be allergic to them. Like that. And the two groups... Um, the, the feature, I, I don't know how the algorithms go on behind the scene, but uh, the way the game chooses which feature to be allergic to, um, I think it tries to pick one that has at least a few in that category, uh, but the two groups might not always uh, be equal size. Um, and on this difficulty level, uh, it's only one feature that we're looking for. Uh, on harder ones, there'll be uh, multiple things to consider. But this one, all that matters is with roller skates, without roller skates. So once you understand how this puzzle works um, at this difficulty, uh, it's not too hard. Um, you'll always need to use up a few guesses to figure out what it's looking for. Uh, but you probably won't need more than two or three uh, to find um, which is the rejected feature. And then uh, the last one we'll send across. You did it! You saved them all! Yay! Celebrate, Zumbinis! Be happy! We completed one puzzle out of nine uh, that you need to get to the end. Alright, let's go. These stone guards have their rules, so do proceed with skill. Zumbini's one guard won't allow, the other guard surely will. Hmm. 
Welcome. Do be careful as you make your way up the path. Okay, so our Zuminis have journeyed on. I just realized that on their journey they've brought like no supplies with them. So no bedrolls, no food, uh, no climbing gear, uh, no hats or raincoats or anything. So, so they left Zumini Isle with basically nothing whatsoever. Um, I hope they've been able to forage food along the way, but uh, this part of the map is kind of cliffy and hilly and doesn't seem to have a lot of resources, so um, poor Zubinis. Alright, so we're at our new location, which you can see uh, has uh, already more going on than the allergic cliffs, uh, but let's check out the help uh, message. Stone Cold Caves. The cave guardians have a reaction to certain Zubinis, just like the allergic cliffs. What, what, what one guardian likes, the opposite guardian does not. For example, if the left guardian accepts spring feet, the right guardian will reject this feature. The same goes for the upper and lower guardians. Look for one feature, such as a red nose, that a cave guardian either accepts or rejects. Try figuring out what the right or left guardians like first, and then try the upper or lower guardians. Okay. So this is like the allergic cliffs, uh, but there's two sets of them. So uh, each Zumbini that you send up has to go through two different um, checkpoints. So first, the left and right uh, trolls? Are these trolls? Guardians. Okay. Uh, so the left and right guardians um, will do their check to see if Zumbini is on the correct side, uh, left or right. And then the upper and lower guardians will do their check. Um, so they each have, there's basically two different sets of filters uh, going on. Uh, so two different features could potentially matter. Um, or at least I think that's how it goes. I have heard that on the easiest difficulty, um, the upper lower guardians might not matter. So it might literally be just left and right. Uh, but I'm, I haven't confirmed that myself. Uh, but uh, the first test, it really doesn't matter which Zoomini you pick or which path you send them on because you don't know uh, which one is, um, is allowed. You have no information. So let's just pick randomly uh, and pick a short path because that'll take less time for them to go up. Okay, by me. Thanks for coming. Okay, so that Zoomini made it safely into that cave. Uh, let's see if this Zumini can go in there, because he's pretty similar. Uh, yep, looks like it. Uh, this one is pretty close, except the nose color is different from that first one. Oh! Nope. Okay, so the left guardian did not like this one. So I know it has to go on the right side, uh, but let's try keep it on the lower path for now. You'll do. Don't be shy. Okay. Uh, so, so far it looks like red nose is on this side, green nose is on that side. Um, now, when that one came crashing down like that, uh, it's a little hard to tell. Uh, unlike the allergic cliffs, there's not really any on-screen uh, counter of your mistakes. Uh, but at a certain point, if you make enough mistakes, um, an avalanche of rocks will come down and block the path. And then any Zumini that you didn't send into a cave will be left behind. So um, I, I'm sure you could look that up. It's something like 15 tries. Um, and you, you'll have to keep track yourself of how many failures you've had. But it's a lot more generous than the allergic cliffs, which makes sense because there's uh, two tests you have to pass instead of just... Um, in either or. Okay, so green noses seem to go on this side, uh, red noses on that side. Uh, I don't have any more propeller feet left. I have a ponytail uh, left. Okay, so here's uh, a flat top with a green nose, and here's a flat top with a red nose. So he's got two features in common with this guy. It would be nice if I could just put him here, but that doesn't work. Uh, so let's try sending him up this path. You do. <laughs> okay. Uh, so red noses are good here. Uh, let's try the green nose on this side. 
Okay. Let's try someone who has nothing in common with these except the green nose. Okay, so it looks like all green noses are fine on this side. Uh, but now we have um, no reds and no greens. Oh wait, here's a green. Okay, now we have no reds and no greens left. So we don't have enough information to know uh, which of these go on which side. So let's try purple up here. That seemed to work. Uh, and then blue. That cave is getting crowded. Okay, so the way I think this works, I think it's kind of like the allergic cliffs. Um, this guy here uh, accepts only green noses and this one rejects green noses. So this one here you could think of as being the allergic one. Like I know it's not sneezing, but uh, it's allergic um, or dislikes green noses. Uh, so all the green noses have to go the other way. And this guy needs green noses. So that's why this cave here looks like a complete mess uh, of unrelated Zumbinis. Because the only thing that matters is that they don't have a green nose. So this one should be okay on this side. Hip hip Zumbini! Hip hip Zumbini! And you can also see none of them went in the upper path. Uh, the lower guy never rejected any of them. Um, I didn't actually try any on the upper path, so I'm not sure if they would have been accepted or not. Um, if they theoretically could have gone in either the upper or the lower. But um, that wasn't needed. The lower guy accepted them all, so uh, we'll send them all on their way. Hey, don't forget to write. They can't write. They don't and have hands. So our brave travelers continue on through this dusty wasteland until they meet Arno, the almost omnivorous, one very hungry pizza troll. This is most people's favorite puzzle. Fleens? You're not fleens. <laughs> huh. Whatever you are. Make me a pizza! Ah, yes, Pizza Pass. Uh, what everyone remembers about this game, especially this guy. Uh, this character is quite a character, and he has some funny lines. Um, but let's go ahead and get the info. Uh, pizza Pass. Arno desperately needs pizza. Make his favorite pizza, and he'll let the Zumidis pass. Build your pizza and be aware of what Arno likes and dislikes. If a pizza has a topping that Arno hates, he'll throw it into the reject pit. He'll throw pizzas missing one or more of his favorite toppings onto his rock. Arno is a finicky eater and he won't necessarily like the same pizza the next time you see him. Because that would be way too easy. Although you'd still have to write it down because I don't think you'd remember. But anyway, so this guy here is hungry and wants pizza. Despite looking like a tree stump, uh, and theoretically, uh, trees can't eat pizza. They would eat water or dirt. Uh, but he eats pizza. Uh, I guess he's a, a pizza troll that looks like a tree stump. Uh, and we have this handy dandy machine here that can make pizzas, but Arno is either really dumb or really lazy, uh, and refuses to use it himself, so the Zuminis have to use it. Even though he has hands. Make me a pizza! Uh, and they don't, so I guess they have to hit the buttons with their heads. Uh, but anyway, so the way the pizza machine works is you just click on the different buttons uh, to add toppings to the pizza. You click a button to remove it. Um, so we've got, uh, I think these are olives, uh, green peppers, pepperoni, although it's a pretty dark brown. Uh, maybe it's a different type of meat. Uh, mushrooms, which I hate on pizza, but maybe Arno likes. And then this may look like some type of ramen noodle, but it's I think it's supposed to be cheese. Uh, you could also actually send out a blank pizza, which I think they sometimes accept uh, as what they want. So uh, anyway, uh, this is the first puzzle we've come to that does not actually use Zumini features. So uh, the features of the Zuminis don't matter. You don't have to order them or group them in any way. What matters is the pizza. So 
Uh, this looks a lot different from the previous puzzles, but it's actually not that different. So in the previous puzzles, uh, we had uh, guardians or cliffs uh, that would accept or reject certain features. And here we have Arno who will accept or reject certain toppings. Uh, so the interesting thing here is that these toppings can all combine with each other uh, in every possible way. So Zumini features, each Zumini can have only one eye, one nose, one hair, one feet. Uh, so every Zumini can have um, only four different features uh, and each feature comes from a pool of five. Uh, but with these guys, uh, they can combine uh, in multiple ways like that. So um, I don't know if that makes one of them more complex than the other, um, but, but that's how it is. So uh, we could start off by just sending a blank pizza. Uh, and predictably, he didn't like a completely blank pizza. So if you want to get fancy, you could just try building a really complex pizza with everything on it. Uh, which he really dislikes. Uh, and I've heard a rumor that uh, the more bad toppings that are on the pizza, uh, the more extreme his disgust will be. So you can sort of tell if it's just one bad topping versus multiple bad toppings. Uh, but doing every possible topping was almost guaranteed to be rejected. Uh, so the, the safest way to do this is to just do one topping at a time. Uh, and then uh, at the end, you can combine them into a pizza. Uh, so let's start with olives. More toppings. Okay, so we know he likes olives. Uh, so forget what I just said. Um, I could try the peppers by themselves and then try the pepperoni and then the mushrooms and then the cheese by itself and then combine at the end. But we already know he likes olives. So if he dislikes this pizza, it'll be because of the green peppers. Something on that I don't like. Uh, which would have to be the peppers. Make me a pizza. So let's try uh olives and pepperoni. Something must go. Okay, so he doesn't like pepperoni. So let's try olives and mushrooms. And don't worry, like, there's never going to be a, a situation where he's like, I like olives by themselves and I like mushrooms by themselves, but I hate the combination of olives and mushrooms. Uh, that it, it doesn't work like that. If he likes them individually, he would also like them together and vice versa. Come on, more stuff. Okay, so, ow. So that right there was a warning. So the way that failure works in this puzzle is a little different. Uh, with the other two, uh, with the cliffs and the caves, uh, you got so many guesses. And then if you had enough bad guesses, then eventually uh, the puzzle would sort of collapse and uh, you couldn't send any more Zumbinis through. Uh, with this one, uh, if you start having enough bad guesses, he'll start to get angry. Um, right then, he just sort of pushed them against the machine. Uh, but I believe in the very next uh, bad guess, uh, if we were to send another bad pizza through, he would actually knock the Zumbini so far away that they would basically be booted out of uh, the puzzle entirely and they wouldn't come back. Um, but he does that individually, so you would have to keep trying to solve the puzzle, and with every continued bad guess, he would knock another Zumbini away. So, um, but we don't have to worry about that. We know uh, what he likes. He likes olives, and he likes mushrooms, and then the only thing we haven't tried yet is the cheese. So, if he doesn't like this, then the game has a glitch in it. Thank you, thank you. Well, I'm glad you're appreciative. Have a pizza party! You've done quite well. 
No, he doesn't pay us or tip us for helping him. I guess uh, the troll is crossing the path, so we have to appease the troll like a weird the three billy goats gruff. Not, not the same at all, but uh, there's also a whole bunch of wasted pizzas, which I guess nobody is going to eat. I'm sure the Zuminis would love to eat it because they're probably starving, but nope, he won't share even the rejects with them. Uh, but he is full now, and that makes him... Uh, a little more peaceful and he will let us through now so so that's pizza pass uh, it can get more complex obviously on uh, later difficulties but uh, I don't think it's ever uh, so complex that uh, it becomes unsolvable or frustrating to solve um, as long as you are using a good method of uh, testing out the toppings uh, I don't think there's really any reason uh, that you should fail this one even when it's uh, on harder difficulties uh, okay uh, so let's go ahead and continue on Hold on, what's this? A campsite with hot soup all ready to eat? Looks like a fine place for Zumbinis to relax. But when they're ready to move on, they'll need a group of 16 along the path. Okay, and we have made it to our first checkpoint. Uh, the checkpoints are important uh, because you are only able to get to the map at checkpoints, and the map is the only place you can save. So uh, checkpoints are the only place you can save your journey, and when you uh, continue, uh, you can uh, pick up where you left off with this group at the checkpoint and then go on to the next leg of the journey. Uh, there's actually a fork in the road here, so there's two different paths we can pick. Um, and if we wanted to, we could even leave this group behind and go back to Zubini Isle and just get a brand new group uh, and bring them through the first um, passage uh, of the cliffs, the, the guards and the troll, uh, and bring them here as well. Uh, but... Uh, we will wait to continue um, or explore this campsite further until the next video because I believe uh, this has been a decent length episode already, but I'm planning to record the next video like right now, uh, so it should be up pretty much uh, the same time as the first video. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching uh, this initial version uh, of the Zumbinis, uh, the first video of this Let's Play. Uh, there hopefully will be a lot more after this. It will take a lot of videos to get um, all of the unlockables at the end of the game, uh, which I am excited to try and do for the first time ever, as far as I remember. Uh, but thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>